I want to write a second set of tests before we leave this uh, REST API. We, <clears throat> we wrote tests for the underlying database object. But I want to show you a little bit more complicated style of testing. Uh, I, want to, I want to write tests for the web app. So we have, a, we have an Express app. And this Express app has a series of routes uh, here for getting bridges, getting all the bridges or getting bridges by ID. And it's calling the underlying code in our database. So we've already written code that tests the database module. I want to write another set of tests for the, for the REST API. Because the REST API is using HTTP requests instead of straight function calls, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to use a helper library. And this is a very common part of doing testing is figuring out how to run simulated or uh, extracted versions of your code. In this case, I want to simulate a network request in a browser. I want to be able to make a request into my, into my code. So I'm going to use this thing called super test. And so I'm going to install this into my, into my project to be able to work with it. So I'll, I'll npm install super test. And what it's going to allow me to do, if I show you the code here, is it's going to allow me to create um, HTTP requests to my Express app and then write various kinds of expectations. Expect things to, to work or to fail, to get back the results, um, to iterate through the results and so on. So I'll, I'll show you what this code, what, what this code looks like. So I have super test running here. I'm going to rerun my, uh, my watch. And okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to write tests for app.js. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new file here called app.test.js. And you'll see that Jest automatically found it. And so now it's got two tests that are running, but it's upset at me because I need to have a test in here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pull in my app and I'm going to pull in um, super test and, I'll, and it, it, it's going to export this thing called request, basically like a, an HTTP request that I can do. So I'm going to require in super test. Okay, just like we did last time, I'm going to set up a describe for this. I'm going to say this is my API, uh, REST API, and inside here, I'm going to I'm going to write all of the So I have two routes. I have a get route for API slash bridges. And I have another one for uh, bridges, plural. And I have another one for bridges with an ID. So I have these two different routes that I want to be able to write tests for. I'm just going to break them up into these sections. And again, we have no tests, so it's upset with me. OK, so if you take a look at our routes, what can we see about these bridges? Let's start with this one here. So if I, if I hit the bridges route with a HTTP GET request, I expect to get back JSON, which has all of the um, data that I'm looking for inside my bridges. So let's, let's think about how to write tests for this. So let's write a test um, that says, OK, this should return uh, a JSON array when you do the GET request, like so. OK, so what I want to do here is I want to make a request to my app 
and I want to do a get request for a particular path. So the path that I want is API slash bridges. So you'll notice that I'm using, I'm, I'm working with my app directly because over here you'll see that my my app exports the app object, which is really common with Express apps so that you can write tests for them. So I'm not gonna worry about what port it's running on or connecting to localhost or all that. I'm gonna work directly against this app object and the app object has the uh, API router attached to it. So all of these routes that I need to work with are attached to the app object and they're hanging off of slash API. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna make a request using super test to the app. I'm gonna get these bridges. Now think about what this code is doing. This code needs to go and make a network request <clears throat> to, our, to our server essentially. And it's gonna take time for that request to get processed. So I want to be able to get back the results of this. So I'm gonna get back a response from this. However, this is going to return a promise. So what I'm gonna to do to make this easier on myself is I'm gonna say that this code is going to use asynchronous, uh, it's gonna use, a, it's gonna use a wait. So I need to decorate it and say, okay, this is an asynchronous function and I'm going to use a wait. So what this code really says now is make a request, get the promise that comes back, wait on the then callback and when the then callback happens, pass me the response object right here. So now the code that happens from this point forward is gonna happen after the promise is resolved. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna expect that the responses status code should be 200. So if this works, I should get a 200 back from the web server. And I'm also going to expect that the, the thing that I get back, I expect it to be an array. And what is the thing I get back? It's the body of the response. So the body of the response should be an array like that. So this is really compact code. And I'm using async await here. I made a video earlier that you can look at if you haven't already done so just talking about what this means and what this means. But essentially I'm using promise-based code here, but because I'm using async and await, it's really small. You'll notice that I don't have a try catch. So because I'm inside this test, what Jest is gonna do, if because I'm doing an asynchronous uh, function, that means that this function is gonna return a promise back to Jest. And if this promise sends back a, a rejection, because this doesn't work, then what's gonna happen is the test is gonna fail. So I'll show you an example. Like if I were to say bridges, like let's say I had a spelling mistake. So I forgot the S and I run this. So you can see that the web server comes back and it says like, this this didn't work like it gave it gave a 404 express it's not working um if i do bridges then it passes just to show you what it would look like if i if i were to say throw new error if i were to throw here or if my code were to throw, you see that the test fails um, as you would expect it to fail. So anything, anything that throws inside of this async function is gonna be seen by Jest as a failure of the test pass. So that's good. And if it passes, you can see here, you can see that there was a 200 response on my get call to API bridges, which is great. So that, that has worked the way that I would expect it to work. Is there anything else that I care about testing here? Well, one thing that we had to do that was really important, you'll recall, in a previous video, we had to add cores headers to our routes. And we did that because we needed the access control, we needed this header here to be defined. 
so that our Angular app, which was running on 4200, could access a server that's running on 3000, for example. So this is something we could write a test for. We could say that we expect, let's write a test um, that this should include cores header. Okay, so what we're really testing for here is that this header is set. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? Well, first step is we need to make a request to this, like so. And because we're doing a wait, I'm gonna say this is async, like that. So the response is gonna come back and what I'm interested in doing with this response is I'm going to expect that the, it's always good to check the status. Let's just say res.status. Um, I expect that to be a 200. And I also expect that um, the response.headers at um, access control allow origin. Um, actually, let's. I can't remember how it does this. Let's try this. If it's uppercase, lowercase, let's just try. So if I'm going to expect that this header, um, if I pull it out of the headers in the response, I expect that this is going to be equal to uh, the asterisk, basically, to equal asterisk like that. So let's run that. Okay, so this failed. So you can see that we expected to get back the star, but we actually got back undefined. So I'm going to debug this test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to console.log the um, the response headers because I'm I want to see what's actually in there. So in my test, when it runs, you can see that all of these headers are here, and I was right. The first thing I thought to do was right. Like it's actually um, it's normalizing all of these to lowercase. So if we were to um, set that to lowercase. Let's see if it works. Yeah, that pass because this is this is now working. So I'm going to get rid of this console.log. And you can see that Jest tells you that there's an extra console.log in the output that it's processing. So we'll once we're done debugging this thing, I'm going to pull that out and save this. And that looks good. OK? So let's move on and write some tests for this one down here. So the first thing that I know I'm going to want to do is I'm going to, I basically want to write this exact same test again. Like it should include the uh, cores header. So why don't I refactor this? Let's take this code here and I'm gonna, um, up here, let's write a function. Function um, expect cores header takes a path. And let's see how this goes. So I have a response. Instead of hard coding this here, I'm gonna give whatever path is passed to me. Expect to get a 200, expect for this to be true, like so. Now, because I'm using a wait here, I have to say that this is asynchronous like that. So that means that I should be able to um, rewrite this here. I should be able to say, um, Something like that. However, 
if you ever see yourself doing something like this, where you basically just do async and then you immediately do a wait, it's usually, in this case, I can just return a promise. So this function returns a promise automatically. You don't see it, but because of async, there is a promise in here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna shorten this down. I'm gonna say that this test looks like this. I'm just gonna call this asynchronous function. Or if you want, you could just do it all in one line. I don't know if that's better or worse, but we could do it in we could do it in a single line like that. Okay. So now we should be able to do the same thing down here. So we need to pass in some ID, like so if I pass in an ID, I don't know, I don't know what to use for an ID. So if I run this, you'll see that my function has failed here. So it expected a 200, but it got a 404 because that makes sense um, because I'm, I'm giving an ID that doesn't exist. So let's modify this. Let's modify this function to also take a expected status. And if you don't specify it, I'm going to assume it's 200. And if if you want, you can pass me a another one. So let's say 404. So that worked. You can see that I get a 200, a 200, a 404. It's getting a 404 here because of this. So now I've got a test for both of my functions that they, both of my routes rather, that they include a, um, they both include the cores headers that I expect to use when I'm working with this in Angular. Okay, let's write some more tests for this one. Let's deal with this 404 because we're sort of relying on it here, but we haven't tested it. So let's write a test. So we should return a 404 for an unknown ID. So what's that gonna look like? I'm gonna get a response from request Requesting from the app, I'm going to do a get request to API slash bridges slash. Now you have to be careful here because you need to have an ID that's always going to fail. So let's do no such bridge like that. Now remember, this thing returns a promise, so we have to await it. And because we're awaiting, we have to put async up here. So what we expect in this case, we expect the uh, responses status to be 404. Like that. So if for some reason we don't return a 404, and you can see if we look at this code here, our code is getting the bridge and it's saying if there's no bridge returned, then send back a 404. So that's good. Our, our code is doing what we expect it to do, but we have a test which guarantees that our code operates in uh, the, you know, the ways that we expect. Okay, what else could we test? So we expect to get back data that matches the um, we expect to get back data that matches the properties that we need. So we need there to be an ID, a name, a lat, a long. So let, we have to write something kind of similar to what we wrote a minute ago for the for the database tests. And so here I'm going to say uh, should return a bridge object. 
for a known ID. And so we know, we know we're gonna need async, so I'm just gonna write it. So this is async. Okay, so let's think about this. When we did our database test, we had to write a test like this. We wrote it two different ways. You'll remember that we, we, we got back all of the results and then we um, got the first item and we used it to get back the ID and then we, we worked with that data. So we should be able to do something similar here, but we have to do it through the REST API. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a request that's gonna get all of the bridges. And interestingly enough, that's actually um, something, well, no, I'm gonna, I'll keep it, I'll keep it. Uh, I'll just keep it in this, in this function. Okay, so let's, let's do this. Let's get the body of requesting from our app the doing a get request to uh, API slash bridges. And I'm using object destructing here because I just want to pull the body off of this thing. Um, we could also pull the status off if we wanted to. So if this is probably getting more clever than it needs to. So we could say, um, expect the status to be uh, 200. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the body and I wanna pull off of the body, or I, want, I basically wanna grab the first item in the body. So I'm going to, let's just expect array.isArray um, body to be true. So we expect this to be an, uh, an array. And I'm gonna say, bridge zero is equal to the body at zero. So I'm gonna grab the first bridge that comes back from requesting the bridges out of this thing. So that should already, hopefully that passes already. It does. Okay, so let's add more. So now I'm gonna do a second request. So I'm gonna do another response and I'll say await, I'm gonna do a request to the app and I'm gonna do a get to API. Now let's write this differently. Let's do a template literal. So I'm gonna say API slash bridges. And then I wanna put the ID here that I just got from the, the bridge above. So I'm gonna say, let's get the bridge zero dot ID and put it on the URL. Expect uh, res dot status to be uh, 200. Um, and then let's grab this, let's grab this bridge. So const bridge is equal to the response body, like that. And now what I wanna do is I wanna just do a bunch of comparisons. So I wanna to check to make sure that a few things are true. So the first thing that should be true is, up here I got the first bridge from the set of results. And I need to compare it to the data that comes back for, <clears throat> excuse me, for this particular bridge ID. So what we could do here is we could say that we expect the bridges ID to be equal to exactly the same thing as bridge zero's ID. And the same is true of the name. Like that. So those two things should match. And the last check I could do is I could expect that the, um, all of the, like what's inside this bridge, all of the keys in the bridge, it should look like this. So I'm gonna define an array that has, it should have an ID, a name. What else does it have? Latitude, 
longitude, uh, year, length, and width. So let's let's do this again. So let's just document this. Okay, so get the first bridge um, basically we're gonna get the first bridge ID and name um, when we call the bridges route. Then we're going to get the full bridge object for the, the ID that we just did. And then we're going to compare um, the ID and the name. And then we're going to make sure that every property that we expect to be on this thing is on this thing like that. Save this. That looks good. So if anyone ever changes this code so it doesn't work this way, this, this test is gonna break. And, you know, so we have a contract that says, these are all the things that we expect to be true about, about this REST API. Okay, so I'll, Pause here working on writing just tests for our node app. And I want to do one more set of tests. And this time I want to do browser based Jasmine tests for our Angular, for an Angular component. So that's where, that's what we'll do in the next video.